Today I want to go over a skill that many of you may not have mastered that can save your life in everyday living and in SHTF and a prep that you might not have thought of to include in your get home bag or your bug out bag. And it's something that you have in your household every day, but you might not have realized the importance and the life-saving properties of this everyday supply. Now, think about it. Let's say something terrible happens. Um, maybe, you know, they talk about EMP, right? And you're 50 miles from your house. Well, you take out your get-home bag, lock up your car, and start hoofing it. You know, 50 miles, that's not too bad. You can make it in two days or so, maybe three days, depending on the terrain, right? But what happens if all of a sudden you feel this terrible pain in your gut and you almost want to double over and, yep, you have a bout of diarrhea. Now, believe me, in something like that, that's going to delay you a long, long time. And it could be even life-threatening because you may not have the fluids you need to replace. And you may never get home. Now, you could have probably prevented this episode of diarrhea by something very, very simple. It's called proper hand washing. And learning how to wash your hands properly can save your life. And you might say, hey, I've got hand sanitizer in my bag. I'm not worried. Well, that is great, and it is a great thing to include in your bag. But hand sanitizer doesn't work well if your hands are greasy or dirty. You notice hand sanitizers are used all the time in the hospital, and they're even more effective generally for the medical personnel in the hospital. And you want to know why? Their hands are generally clean. They do not have grease or dirt on them because grease or dirt is a barrier to making this hand sanitizer effective. And most people don't use the right amount. You need to have hand sanitizer that would equal a dime size. Now if you got the gel kind, that's easier. This is liquid. Which you probably can't see, but that is enough. You have to have enough of the hand sanitizer to really work. And again, you got to get it in between and all around. Read the ingredients on your hand sanitizer. You want to make sure that it's at least 60 to 90 percent ethanol or isopropanol. You need that to be truly effective. And the organic, I shouldn't say organic, herbal sanitizers, hand sanitizers smell great, but they just aren't as effective as good old alcohol. So what prep is missing from your get home bag and your bug out bag? Simple bar of soap. Let me tell you why. So soap and water are more effective than sanitizers at removing all kinds of germs like cryptosporidium and noroviruses, which we hear about seems to be every day on the news, and C. diff. But there are many diseases that hand washing can prevent. Let's go into some of these. So for diarrhea and vomiting, you have the Campolectobacteriosis, the Cryptosporidiosis, E. coli, Shigellosis, Norovirus, Giardias, and Salmonellosis, or Salmonellas, I think we usually call it. And some of these can have very bad effects that are life-threatening in addition to diarrhea or vomiting. That first one, the Camprolobacterial infection is one of the most common causes of diarrhea illness in the United States. It's estimated it affects two to four million per year with one in 1,000 of those cases resulting in death. Now, there are common respiratory illnesses too caused by poor hand hygiene, like the common cold, which we have to worry about this time of the year. Also, flu, influenza. 
chicken pox, and measles, which seems to be making a comeback, and meningitis. And it can also prevent hepatitis A, which is a highly contagious liver infection. And both MRSA and impetigo are caused by common bacteria that live on our skin, but become a problem if they enter our bodies through a cut. While impetigo is relatively harmless, MRSA is now a superbug and antibiotics often won't work to halt the infection. And there's other annoying ones that aren't life-threatening, such as conjunctivitis, which is pink eye, cold sores, you know, the herpes simplex virus type one, and pinworms. It is so easy to spread these infections. We are always touching our face, mouth, eyes. I'm always going like this because I seem to have little like particles in my eyes. That's a no-no for spreading infection. And you know, we often use a handrail, right? Push a grocery cart, touch doorknobs, or maybe we're preparing meat or veggies for our dinner and they're infected. There you go, spreading the infection. That's why it's really important to wash our hands properly and often uh, when we're preparing food, caring for a sick one, and of course, after we use the bathroom. So I have a um, gross fact for you, but a single gram of human feces, which only weighs as much as a paper clip, can contain one trillion germs. That's right, one trillion. So it's very important to hand wash properly every time you use the restroom. So I think we can all agree washing our hands is important. But are we doing it properly? You want to start with some running water, clean water, and you want to wet your hands thoroughly. And then you can turn off the tap. And then you're going to lather yourself with your soap. Okay, look at that. I'm trying to get in between, get my fingernails, get in between. Okay. Now I've got a nice lather, and for 20 seconds, you could sing the happy birthday song. Okay, Google, set a timer for 20 seconds. 20 seconds, and we're starting now. So for 20 seconds, you're going to want to do the friction. You know, get that suds all over between your fingers, palms, because believe it or not, it's just not the soap and water killing those germs or releasing the germs. It is the friction you are creating. There's our 20 seconds. Okay, Google, stop the timer. Now, if you just don't happen to have OK Google around, you can just hum the happy birthday song to yourself twice, and you have the amount of time that you should be actually using your lather and applying it on your hands. And now, notice I have the kind of thing I don't have to touch it. Okay, and then we... Oh. Okay, you rinse it off really well. And it doesn't have to be warm water, that's better, but it doesn't have to be. And now you want to dry your hands well. And it's better to use a single use towel than one you're using more than once. Or air dry them. Okay, now we got them nice and dry. And they are clean. Now, if you wear any rings, which I don't, it's best if you could take them off and clean inside the rings too because bacteria and germs can be underneath those rings, so you have to be careful. And if you have special nails, you know, those longer nails, make sure you're getting underneath them carefully because they could actually store some of the germs that are bad for you. Now, if you see, you know, in bathrooms, generally you have liquid soap, and the reason is uh, that's easier to, you know, spread all over your hands. Um, but bar soap can work just as well, and is much more portable in a get-home bag or a bug-out bag. Now, 
one of the things I notice is we do it all properly, right? We wash our hands, whatever. We dry them on a towel or under one of those blow dryers, or maybe we air dry them. And believe me, you're supposed to air dry, not wipe it on your jeans, which is something I've often done. So you've done everything perfectly. And then you go to leave the bathroom and you turn the knob. You probably just got germs right back on your hand. So it is better if you don't have kind of the elbow type of lever to, if you're using a cloth or disposable hand towel, just to use that to open the door. That way you don't get those germs right back on your clean hands. My holiday wish for you is that you stay healthy through the holiday season and through the next year. And one of the ways you can do that is by washing your hands properly and often. And don't forget the 20 second rule. This is Prepper Potpourri wishing you all a happy holiday and healthy 2020.